Welcome back everybody. It's been a couple of days and I've got a lot of videos coming out. They're probably going to come out multiple videos a day for a few days. Um, mostly because I got a link to them all. These are all part of the research. I'm trying to show you guys how to get the most out of your training. And we've got a whole bunch of cool other things. So I've got a new workflow, animation workflow, which is going to be added to the Flux pack. So that'll be Foda. So let's take a quick look at that one. We haven't got time, trust me. Okay. So this is going to be called Flux Relight Video Lines. Before I forget, hit that bell. And where were we? Now, essentially what this does is it's the same as the Flux Relight, which we already made, but it takes video. So that means that we're going to be able to put a video clip in here. I do recommend small cropped video clips. I also noticed if you download things from the internet, you get black screen sometimes. So what I do recommend doing is disabling the relight portion of this. Now you'll notice you've got your flux seed, you've got your relight seed, you've got the enhancer seed. There's also the ability to upscale. I'm going to put that to one for now, but the default is two. It's going to be using SD. Oh, no, wait, we don't do that anymore. It's actually taking the image and doing it all by itself. So we set uh, the aspect ratio to begin with for text to image. All right. So this still has a text to image component to it, even though that's not how we're going to use it. So we're going to use it on the new mode three, which is video to image. So that's going to take the video. All right. And once we've got that video, it's going to do sampler steps. It's going to do all the good stuff. So it's going to do uh, image to image on every video frame. So we've got it set to 0 0.04. So it's going to barely touch anything. It'll actually preserve the text, but it will stylize with whatever Laura and prompt that you've got there. You can obviously, I've got the shift really high because I wanted to make it look kind of crazy, but obviously you can do what you want. Um, and essentially what's going to happen is we're going to feed that sequence of images into our uh, random noise. We've got a slight variation seed here. Okay. So it's going to very slightly variate in sequence with the batch. All right. And then the most important thing as always, this is a list because we've made it a list way back here. We converted the video into a list. So we keep the sequence. It's going to process the sequence. And then at the end, it's going to turn it back into a batch and make us a preview video. And if we're happy with this, we can enable relight and do another run. The reason I say that is because you might want to adjust the skip frames part so that you get it on a sequence, you know, like a nice, a nice little clip, right? So if you know where that is, obviously the metric is going to be 30 frames per second. So if it's two seconds in, you'd go skip first 60 and then it will start uh, two seconds in to the clip, right? So once you're happy with the actual loop that you generate here, then you can activate the relight section and do another run. Everything should be on fixed, of course. Yeah, otherwise, you're going to get a different, completely different. Well, the sequence will be the same, but the animation will slightly differ. So anyway, from that point, what's going to happen is it's going to send the, uh, it's going to turn the, uh, the list into a batch, as I say. And then the batch is going to come down here and it's going to go into the relight. Just like before, nothing's changed there. All the same. We're taking the input image, so the image that's coming in is being used to scale the size of the frame of the relight, so that keeps everything together. If you prefer to use that kind of offset animation effect that I showed last time, you just want to right-click on the mask and go input and just reset these back and put them to 512 and 512. And what that'll do is it'll make a square uh, light map sequence, which when stretched, gives a little bit of a shadow in the mist kind of look to it because it's slight things won't quite match, but it will look okay. So the point, that's another thing that you can do. Uh, obviously, I didn't really cover this in the initial video, but you can put whatever you want in here. You could actually put fire, you could actually put all kinds of stuff. You just have to change the blend mode to have it a little bit more strong. So at the moment, we're using soft light. You could use multiply, okay, or normal. And then obviously you can play around with the blend factor. So that, that way you'll be able to bring out effects in different ways. All right. Okay. So, and what we've done is we've done a little bit of a trick, which is a little bit better than before. So instead of uh, downscaling the initial image where you lose a bit of quality so that it matches the light map, instead we upscale the light map as it's smaller. 
And also we're doing a trick where we repeat the image. Oh no, we were doing a trick where we repeat the image, but because it's a video sequence, now we can just put it straight through. So obviously it's driven by, um, it's driven by the video size. So that's how we make sure it's all going to come back to the right size in the end. All right. So we've made the light scale map the size of the animation. And then that gives us this. Now it's a little bit messy and yeah, but what we'll do is we'll run it through the video enhancer and it'll give it a bit more effect. So here we have it coming through the flux detailer. So obviously you can change the prompt if you want, but this one works really well. Um, it's going to do a upscale as what you want. I've got it on 2x for the image we're about to look at. And it's 768 by 768 tiling, and it's running through with the same settings as the uh, top flux um, line. We've got an image list to image batch, so you've got a preview, because I did find that color match and apply let did go a bit, takes quite a long time to do the last two stages. So I like to know that it's looking good, so I don't cancel it and let it actually finish the last step. It's already done the 2x and everything here. Um, and to be honest, like the color match does make the upscale better. And the LUT also helps the color palette and everything to look a bit better. But like I said, if there was a problem, you'd know here and you could save quite a bit of computa computation. You should really know if it's done a good job by this point, though. And as you can see, when we've matched the mask to the animation, it does fit perfectly. So here we have it. And we've got this kind of crazy... <laughs> I you should know what movie it's from and basically yeah it's a famous movie scene i've just literally clipped it run it through and obviously as you can see now every frame is completely different this is not stealing anything if anything it's you know stealing the concept of a miner walking down and it is the it is the famous the famous walk but right so that's what i wanted to show you for this one it's actually pretty simple to use you just uh, make a video crop and throw it in there um, and then it's completely up to you what else you want to do with your prompt and all this other business. What lore is you loading? There's loads of lore is now. Okay. Um, another thing you might want to do is you might want to swap out different splines. So before I had like a whole other line with different, and I've, I found it's easier just to swap this out because it's one connection here. And so what you can do is you can make lots of these and then just like fold them down here. Now I've given an example of one which is also being controlled by the frame rep the frame rate, not the frame rate, the animation length. That's the animation length. So that's something important to note, right? I did this cool effect with uh Donald Trump where he did the hand movement and stopped, but then the lighting kept going. And the way I did that was I rendered 30 frames up here and I rendered 60 frames down here. But then when it puts it back together. It does the first lot and I timed the last frame to end with his hands up. You know what I mean? So, it, it, you know, you time the final frame of the animation to stop at 30. So you do 30 frames of animation and then it holds the last frame. But the relight map has been stretched, time stretched. And so it kind of gives it a weird effect. And um, yeah, anyway, it's just more sort of stuff that you can mess around with. But obviously, if you match the uh, light map to the you match the light map to the animation length and everything matches up then it's going to be fine i would say though there is something i mean maybe somebody else can point me in the right direction on this one actually um there's got to be more efficient ways of handling the images because at the moment what happens is if you try to do somewhere in the order of 150 300 or uh, or any anywhere like that anywhere higher than 150 frames it's gonna potentially just die um, I've been working with 90 frames at a time, basically, um, just to be safe, because um, I found that if I go up to 120, sometimes I will get a RAM lock and the mouse doesn't move and the CPU goes over temp and it's basically time to turn her off. And then you have to wait for a few minutes. And this doesn't happen with this particular workflow, but there's another one which I will show in a future video. But it is something to be aware of. Like I said, a lot of people often say, why have I got frame cap 60? And I find two seconds at 30 frames or four seconds at 15 frames per second. You know, it's a reasonable amount to generate. You can put it all together in some other tool. It's easy to join videos together. Um, 
and I find it's a safer way to do it. It's also quicker. Uh, you don't want like running for a thousand seconds to fail. So I've been trying to look at more little one, two, four, you know, that, that sort of thing. Okay. So I hope I've explained everything to you. This is going to be in the next Foda Flux pack, uh, but it's essentially an offshoot of the Nova Relight concept. Um, the tricks that we've done here, okay, are we have rendered at 1024 by 1024, and then we've passed that to the, uh, like I said, I've got an aspect controller, which is running the same aspect ratio, or it should be. Let me just see now. Here we go there. I uh, should probably just do half size. It'd probably be even better. I want to make it fit even better, actually. But this, this, this should work. It's coming from the original image. Downscale if bigger. And it goes. Yeah, I mean, there's always room for improvement, guys. And like I said, there will be future versions which will um, look at making it better. Okay. If you find some magic formula, please drop by our Discord and share it. We are all sharing our workflows and Laura models in there, so it's got quite a lot of fun. See what other people are making. Uh, all of my training stuff is in there as well, but we'll get into that in another video. So, until then, I will see you next time. So, memberships are here. I've added donator and member. The donator membership is just uh, you want to support the channel, help us grow. Member, you're going to get some exclusive video access. And uh, check out the join now button for more information.